Hi everyone and welcome to The Extra Bit for episode 414 of Conversation Street Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about um, head swaps, character recasts that Coronation Street has seen over the years because this week we have welcomed a new Adi Alahan played by um, uh, Adam Hussein who replaces um, the aptly named Zenon Ditchett who's been ditched after all this time playing um, Asha's twin brother. No, he, he has not been ditched, he chose to leave to focus on his A-levels. I just wanted to make a joke out of his name. You're so horrible. I'm sorry. Um, if you have never listened to the podcast before and this is your first experience with it, hello, I'm Michael. I'm this Gemma. Is, is my lovely wife, Gemma. I'm not lovely. She is. She's fantastic. No, she's awesome. Horrible. She doesn't need a head swap or anything. She's she's excellent. I would like one though. <laughs> would you like to? Can just... I come back as eight years young? Eight, no, eight years. No, I don't want to be eight years older. No. Eight years younger. If, if if Nick Price can and um, Ben Price can play Nick as eight years older, then I can play somebody eight years younger. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> so, um, head swaps on soaps. It seems like um, some people really hate them. Others don't care and think it's absolutely fine. And if the narrative requires that a character continues on the show, then why not do a head swap? What are your um, your, your first impressions? What What's your overall feelings about um, when they happen? Does it fill you with a sense of trepidation and dread? Do you hate it? Is it awkward? Is it difficult to get used to? Or do you just kind of get I'm used to it pretty to quickly? I'm think about when it's happened since I've watched the show. And I genuinely don't think that I've really had that many times. It always, it always seems, it only seems to have happened to like um, Ryan and Ali. Yeah. That's noticeable to me. And and a lot of kids as well. And they, the children, which, you know. That's kind, that's kind of natural. Me. And I, I, I accept it. Um, I, I suppose I wouldn't even say that um, I, I wouldn't want it to happen. I mean, in an ideal world, they'll cast the ideal, you know, child actor as soon as it's born and it will go on to be the next. Give me a good actor name, Gemma. Jack, Jack P. Shepherd. Jack P. Shepherd. What? So what, are you get, what are you trying to say? But, but sadly, not all child, child actors are, are blessed that way, however many um, lessons they can have. And also, a lot of them want to carry on and sort of get on with their schoolwork or their studies or, or what have you. So I don't wow. mind that quite so much. It's very rare to have a child actor who comes into the show who remains at, in their role. I mean, David Platt, probably quite a notable example of that because... He was only played, um, David, David Platt was played by Thomas Ormson in between 1990 and 2000. But then since 2000, so it's 20 years, Jack P. Shepard's been playing him. And then you've got like Chesney, for example. I think he's only ever been played. Yeah, he, he's only Sam been Astor. Sam Astor. So, you, and, and ever since you've been watching it, uh, Jack P. Shepard has been David, hasn't yeah. he? So I, I started watching it mid 90s, so I do have vague memories of the old David and watching it again on ITV3 now, obviously seeing him again. But um, in my head, like, that, there could be no other David than Jack P. Shepard. And, and that's an example of when, I mean, at still quite a young age, the casting director spots something about a kid. And, and I don't know how easy it is to tell because sometimes you might see a child actor and think they've got potential and then they completely you know, go off the rails. But with Jack well, P. Shepard, also, they struck gold there. So I'm, yeah. I, I, the, I just wonder how much, how, how different the character of David would have turned out to be had um, the original actor stayed in the role. Would they have, yeah, I, 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 I don't remember whether he was a decent actor or not, but Jack P. Shepard is something um, quite unique and special. And I think he's been given certain roles, um, certain prominence in the show that, you know, under other circumstances, he might not have got. Well, yeah, that's the whole point, isn't it? It's like, you might very well hire a competent child actor who grows up to be a, a decent or very good actor when they are an adult. But if they're not right for the role that or the direction that you want to take the character in when they get to a certain age, it becomes very tricky. Because mm. some, some, some characters have specific backgrounds and... Um, not all of them makes, you know, sometimes they can be very changeable with what they do with characters and take them into weird places that you never thought they would do. But, um, it must be, in, it must be difficult if you feel like you're pigeonholed as a, as a show by the temperament or 
the the way a certain uh, actor is playing a role and you, you want to completely change it, you, you probably would be better off getting a new actor in. Yeah, I, I I do wonder how often when the kid actors get replaced and they say, oh, it's because I want to concentrate on my schoolwork, or whatever. How often that is the actual reason and how much they're kind of pushed out by mm. the show's producers. Well, I don't think it's very fair to speculate on that, to be honest. But no, I know. I will but... say that um, it's not necessarily all down to the kid when they first get into acting as to, you know, whether they want to be a famous TV star or not. Mm-hmm. It's the parents who who generally will, you know, obviously oh, the, child, the child will, will say, I want to be an actor or whatever, but... You can't be a child actor without your parents on board. Mm, yeah, and you've got, I mean, Sam Aston. He was, again, really unique, amazing pick by whoever cast him back in the mid 2000s. I can't remember how, how long Chesney's been in it now, but has he, has he always been in it since you've been watching it? No, he couldn't, he couldn't have been. No, he couldn't no, have been. Came in. Yeah, yeah. But for example, but he so... was so fantastic. And, and on that um, Kids of Coronation Street program that I watched last week, the casting director talked about sometimes you just know with somebody and it's no yeah. surprise at all to me that Sam stayed in the role up until adulthood and it would be very weird now I think for him to get a recast and then Chesney's not a lot of people's favourite character now whereas back when he was younger um, everybody adored him. Chesney was sort of praise and loved and everyone just wanted to you know, grab his little cheeks and go Chesney or just look after him um, but I couldn't so imagine like him played by anybody else now. To consider how many child actors who were replaced on Coronation Street who then went on to not act at all after that. Mm, yeah, because like. Which kind if... of would cement the reasons why they were replaced in the first place. Either they just weren't into acting anymore or they, they weren't as talented as the replacements or. Mm. Well, they might have just had a, a really bad experience with showbiz and it's oh, just put yeah, them off. They might have wanted to. That specific show or the people that were on it at that yeah. specific time. Because, it's, um, you know, the culture changes behind a show all the time, depending mm. on who's in charge. Yeah, the actress who played Sarah Louise before Tina O'Brien. Um, she was at the time that she left and that was that must have been 99 2000 or so um, the reason given was that she wanted to be uh, carry on with her studies or was it her gymnastics talking about Lindsay King Lindsay King that's right Gemma, Gemma has got, got a crib sheet together but yeah she she's since said that she got massively bullied at school all the way through like primary school into the beginning of secondary school I think maybe um, because of her role in Coronation Street and she was like no thanks, mate. I, I'm well, out of here. It was also here. a bit of a tragic story for the Sarah Platt actors at the beginning because you've had Leah King and Lindsay King, who were twins, and Leah King died of cot death. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, she was Lindsay took on the role herself, yeah, but took the whole of the burden of it. And a lot that was off, between 1987 and 1999. Yeah, a, a lot of kid actors who are cast, you know, have been cast in the last twenty odd years are twins they give the jobs yeah. to don't they somebody to you know, share the role with so out on her own there Lindsay nobody to you know understand exactly what she's going through as part of you know the Platt family one of the biggest families on the street it must have been tough so it's not surprising that she wanted to, to call it a day but equally that was around the time that they um were doing the uh, Sarah Louise pregnancy story because Bethany was born in 2000 so sometimes you can tell when a new actor or actress comes in, it's because they want to give a certain story. That's true, which I think is happening with with Ardy at the moment. Mm. Because we don't know much about what's what's going on, but there's clearly a story there with Ardy and Asher. Yes. Um, and it makes sense. It, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily a reflection on the, on the character, on the actor who played Ardy before. It's more a case of, let's introduce this character with a bang. Mm. and give this actor or give the sorry introduce the actor with a bang and let's give them something to really get their teeth into yeah and um an act of faith really to show that we believe this person can play this role and here's how we prove it Mm. and Mm. um i guess also if you're gonna you get you get instant publicity with um an actor with a with a head swap Mm. so you wouldn't want to waste that and you want to capitalise on it by giving them that character a big story yeah. to go in hand in hand and double your money yeah. when you're, when you're publicising it. I suppose, I'm only just guessing. Along with along with the, the stories, the bigger stories, is often um, the fact that they want 
they'll, they'll often recast older actors to play children as well so that they can employ them for longer hours so they can you know, give get them a the, bit of racier stories and quite yeah get away with stuff that they wouldn't necessarily get away with if the actor was the same age as the character mm, and sometimes that works fine and it's not necessarily noticeable and other times less so i mean um asha the tanisha gory's managed to has been one of the ones that's kind of survived the head swap and i would be surprised now if she were to be recast because mm. it seems <laughs> like with the skin lightening story last year that was almost a testing ground to see how she would cope and i yeah i feel wall like to all praise her performance yeah. got rightly so so and i think that that must have given her a bit of confidence and, yeah. and she's i think she's coming up to 18 soon so i think that we might keep her in it which is great because as i saw i I prefer it as long as the actor's good to keep the character in it for as long as possible because you the thing about soaps is you grow up kind of feeling like you're getting to know this person and then if sudden one day they look different it's like yeah it's a bit of a reality like oh it's tricky because there's really there's really (laughs) two ways that head swaps come about don't they they either come where you replace a child actor with an older actor almost instantly overnight Mm. and then there's the adult head swap where you basically retire a character for an amount of time because the actor leaves the show and then you bring them back with a different head yeah but even with some of the um the child actors that we've seen both of those like with david for example like one month he was played by i forgot his name again thomas was it and then the next month he was jack p shepherd and it's always it's always funny watching the first scene of a newly head swapped characters because there has to be some dialogue in there to make it really obvious this is who it is like when when oh, yeah, um when when jack uh, first had his scene as david like i think martin comes up to him and goes david like within the first few lines <laughs> um and in um in wednesday's episode this week um uh Ardy was uh called dev dad within his first few lines just so everyone goes oh okay (laughs) fine (laughs) well yeah i mean the thing is about child actors you can get away with it more anyway because they're not always in it very much no um and rd and asha until last year were hardly in it i mean even even rd him i mean even since asha's been in it a lot in the last six months it didn't RD, correlate to more rd no no it really really didn't he was very he he was in it during the skin lightning story but, but not particularly noticeable he was he was on his way out there really what well, you were saying um earlier about sometimes they retire a character for a bit and then bring them back again that's one of the things that they did with tracy and back in the early 80s i think with the the, the famous year and a half when she was up in her bedroom playing tapes that was um, an attempt at the producers to, I don't know, maybe make you forget what Tracy looked like or maybe make the, the transition to the next actress a little less um, obvious. So Tracy... Th- was... This was when Holly Chamaret took over the role in 1985. She she went up to her room. Uh, whenever anyone asked where she was, Deirdre was saying, oh, she's just playing her tapes. And yeah, Bill Podmore, who was the executive producer at the time, said, um, yeah, we didn't we didn't want to make it jarring. Um, and I, I don't think that um, I don't think that Coronation Street would necessarily do that. I can't think of another child actor who's gone off our screens quite so much. Uh, often it's just a case of you have to you have to just accept it and grin and bear it, don't you? I think it's a bit a bit silly to think that people would care that much about it. I don't know. Uh, it it irks me. It oh, does. So as, people do care. It, it, I care. Yeah, it, but as can, as, don't the, the you have work. a bit of leeway in your mind for child actors? I, I know. Do. I, I do. Because I they do. Don't pick, they don't pick, like, ha- when you're a kid, you've got no idea what you want to be when you grow up, and it's not fair to sort of expect them to pick to be an actor when they're five and no. then carry on doing it for the next 60 years. Well, Holly, who was uh, that version of Tracy, um, decided she wanted to become a doctor in the end. I think she did actually go on and do it and study medicine um the the actress who played tracy before then christabel finch she had a great disappearing story she played tracy from 1977 to 1983 well she was randomly picked to be the character in baby unit imagine if you're like what kind of creepy like it sounds a bit creepy like you've just given birth to your baby in it and you've let, let them go into the little incubator room or whatever i don't know why this room exists but 
apparently babies are annoying, so you got to put them in their own room. <laughs> and then the man comes up and goes, oh, have that's you had a thought that's, of? I, that's exactly the voice that I would imagine having. Mm, I'll kid, have that one. Your baby is such for show business. <laughs> Look at that glint in its eye. He'd be like, get away from my kid. Yeah, so Who Chris, let you into this hospital? I, I don't know how much that happens versus... Um, parents now saying we've got we're, 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 I'm pregnant and my baby is free for hire I, I don't know what happens these days but Christabel was picked in the hospital but when um, this was the it was the 70s when this happened I know. so I, I guess people were a bit less concerned about child molest <laughs> maybe, maybe she was just like snatched from the hospital by the casting director and the my parents baby like now. What's, happened to, what's happened to Christabel then they get a letter or, or they don't notice until Tracy appears on TV a few weeks That's later our baby <laughs> I wonder where our baby no, went when, when she Do left you know, when we came home without the baby and you said it was fine I said to you I'm pretty sure that they take they let you take the baby with you and you were like no 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 <laughs> bloody hell well, I, I hope I'm getting paid for it is all I'm going to say <laughs> when they left they did a bit of a flip they, uh, the whole family moved to Guernsey without telling the producers or anything and well, they, they just didn't they just didn't turn what, up were they embarrassed Guernsey's <laughs> quite a nice place to live I'd be showing off so um, so this is when Tracy disappeared upstairs for a few years and it, and it gave the producers a bit of time to, to find uh, Holly to, to play her but but Dawn Acton um, is really the one I think that most people will remember as the the pre-Kate Ford version of Tracy and we talked a little bit about her last week oh yeah week we talked about her we did a character profile last week about Tracy yeah and um, poor Dawn Acton was like they were like bye by then, bye. We don't want any more Tracy stuff. But if you, if we ever decide to bring her back, we'll uh, remember your name and invite you for an in- uh, an audition. And she's like, "Huh, mm, that that thanks. sucks. It does suck a bit, doesn't it? It it, it really does. And and like what I was saying with with David earlier." And it makes me think, I wonder how different the character of David would be if Jack hadn't been cast. I do wonder how different Tracy would have been had Dawn stayed in the role. She was competent actress for sure but Kate Ford well, just looking, brings was... a certain kind of bitchiness I honestly had not seen Dawn Acton play Tracy before you started watching it on Classic and I have not really seen a full episode of Classic with Tracy in it to be to be honest but I was struck by how similar in facial features she is to, mm. to Kate Ford she does look like she could be in related yeah. to her in some way she doesn't look like a young Kate Ford really but she, it's certainly not as jarring as some of the the head swaps we've had in the past mm. I'm mostly thinking of like Adam and Ryan and yeah I mean um Adam the old Adam who was he played by oh he's got a, he's got a difficult name to pronounce to to Ian De Casteca yeah played Adam Barlow from 2001 to 2003 and he was like a really cute nice meek little child he was just like lovely um, and when he came back but with um, Sam Robertson in 2004, he he was a lot kind of, a lot slicker, a lot cooler looking. Um, and then, like you said, with, with Ryan, um, that was another example, particularly when he was recast as Sol Harris in 2012. That was a blatant attempt at, let's sexy bring him back in sexy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the... the he because he came um, into the show at the same time Mark Bayless was cast I think and I vividly remember there being this promo picture oh, saying look God, at our two new hot that. guys and they yeah. were in a boxing the ring new, the with, new their, fresh talent with their with their abs market. out and it's like okay you're going for that are you and that was back in the days when we still had sexiest so, male and yeah. female which is I, honestly I'm glad they got rid of that category but at the same time. Don't try and trick me into thinking that you don't still, in your mind, have that category in your head. I'd like to think that that Coronation Street and, and other soaps have moved on since then, but... Well, people haven't, so why should they? Yeah, I mean, you, you want to watch something nice on TV. No, I'm just saying. I <laughs> it's, think not it's, the, bit, it's not the it's not the most important, and and as soon as I and that really did put me off Soul's portrayal of Ryan when I was no big Ryan fan anyway before then, and and the idea of bringing back this. Um, this character and and the heads uh, and the baby swap story with 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 him and uh, Alex or uh, Ali, Ali as he's now known was a was a bit weird but I I never grew to like um, the the second Ryan well, the just second because Ryan... he was just yeah it, he literally seemed to just be there for the eye candy he was he was fine at acting but he yeah. didn't stand out as an interesting character at all whereas um, Ryan Prescott who plays him now much more nuanced yeah. 
Yeah. And and it's probably difficult too if you've been brought in as an actor, like, right, you're you're the eye candy. Like, what's my plot? I don't know, just look sexy. Mm. And it's interesting as well with Ryan Prescott because if you like see on his Instagram or anything, he's all beefed up and he's got the guns and the pecs Does and the it? abs and everything. But you, they don't they don't make a point of showing that on Coronation Street, do they? Because his character is just a bit of a lovable goofball. Wow. And, and that Ryan is absolutely fine. Uh, uh, that's my favourite Ryan. And it's funny how willing I am to accept that Ryan when his personality has changed so much over the years. How much do you... How much... in in your opinion, is it important that A, the characters do look similar and B, their personalities are similar when they're recast? Well, the thing is, looking at the Ryan Connor in particular, I don't I don't think, I don't remember Ben Thompson who played him between 2006 to 2010. No, we watched and it back then. Also, it was there for four years, but because, I don't remember. Because um, Ryan was in it, played by Ben Thompson between those years. And then you had um, Dario Coates who played at, Ali, Alex, between 2007 and 2008. So when Saul Harris was introduced, he wasn't introduced with, with Ali or Alex. No. And it was only when they brought Ali and Ryan back together when they hired James and Ryan at the same time, mm. which I think was a really good move because it's more important to me that those two characters and Michelle and all the people involved in that storyline had good chemistry with the actors. Yes than it is that he looked like Saul Harris, mm, mm. for example. Definitely. And um, that you, you can push it a bit far. Like, if you had somebody who, like, for example, was playing Rosie Webster, who came back and she was, like, a mousy, dowdy, like, mm. um, plump girl who did not look at all like a model, it would push the boundaries of what you would, you know, expect because... You think, well, we know Rosie's gone to Tokyo to be a model mm. and she, we know that she's vain and she you know, cares about her appearance. So she came back from someone completely different to that. Yeah. It would, wouldn't oh, fly, man. would it? it? It would break my heart if they brought Rosie back and it wasn't played by Helen Flanagan. That, that's the sort of, she's the sort of character now. And there are quite a few who I could imagine being impossible to recast. Even, even however much of a break they had for for the programme she wouldn't be rosy if she wasn't Helen do you think? No I agree with you and and, um, it would sort of make you wonder what's the point of bringing them back yeah like if you're Rosie's the sort of character who is it's not like nobody can play that that kind of person because for example Kathy Tilsley if you had got her to play Rosie I think she would have played it Mm. in a really interesting way and it would have been too dissimilar to Eva but um, we know that Kath's quite talented and she can turn her hands to lots of different things but what I'm saying is there's definitely um, it's, she's not the like um, she didn't invent Helen Flanagan didn't invent the idea of a ditzy <laughs> ditzy blond, blondie girl no she's, she's just like made that. the role her own so much it um, would be really weird to it would be have weird else it would be impossible it would be unnecessary that's mm. that's what i'm saying there are so many other characters or new new people yeah i don't know i, I think this might Why be um, you, an opportune moment Gemma, because i prepared for you a little uh, quick fire uh, it's not a quiz it's a what's your immediate reaction because i've got some characters here that are not in the show at the moment but are still linked to characters that are on the show right. and I, i'm going to name them and i want you to tell me could if they were to come back, played by somebody else, yeah, could, would you accept, accept that? Would it. would you like that, or or would would you accept, or, or would you be yeah, like no, no, the, the, it, it's, yeah, it's, okay. it's only got to be that one. So okay, I got quite a long list there. So um, first off, Todd, the big now, one. Now this is the one that's sticking <laughs> the point, isn't it? Because I miss Todd so much. I wish he would come back, um, but I know you don't agree. And we can't have the actor back. We can't have Bruno back in the show. No, unfortunately. But, so I, I would like to keep it, unless, kill him off. Yeah. Well, no, unless, unless something comes out like, oh, he was a victim of some kind of, you know, prolonged campaign to get rid of him and it was all a lie, which I don't believe at all. No. There's no way he could come back. So... I, I just... You wanted him to die, but I... What he lent to the role, oh, I no, just, he was so good. I but just I, don't I, think anyone else in in the in the role would be a pale imitation unless I, they wanted to make him so completely different. That I'd be like, no, no that's not. No, Todd. I think it. I think it's. Um, I, I think it's unfair to the viewers to hold the character hostage because of the actor's 
bad behavior that's a good point and it, and it like, is very weird it is very weird that eileen seems to not really care i know she he, todd got a mention a few weeks ago on mother's day didn't they or around mother's and day it, but wouldn't it also send, send a, a good thread send a good um message as well like you can't screw up we're not gonna nobody's bigger than the show yeah some people are bigger than the show though that's the thing i know Where's the boundary go? Okay, here's the, here's the next on my list. Um, and it, yeah, okay. Jason. We're, we're not going to talk too much about that, that tough situation <laughs> because there's so many things we don't know and it's silly to talk about them. Jason, now... Mm. Oh, but it's see, really hard, it's isn't hard, it? It's hard, isn't it? But, because the thing is about Jason is that he's, he's just like a lovable dumb hunk. And I don't... I, I, I warmed to Jason because we got to know him over a certain length of time. But I wouldn't really like a lovable hunk, dumb hunk paraded in front of me. A, a, this, you know, like now, like oh look at him, look at his pecs. Oh, you know what I mean? Like. So would you? I mean, there's obviously none of the legal issues like there is a Bruno. But if if Ryan weren't to come back and they were to cast somebody else, would you? Yes or no? I don't know <laughs> because there was something intrinsically lovable about jason that's fine that's fine no, but i'm saying it's it would be i think it would be too hard to cast somebody i think it would be hard but i don't think it would be impossible for that one i i think i'll be more accepting of a jason recast than a bruno even though the, oh, the okay. inverse is more obviously much more likely um rosie we've talked about yeah. already um amber no, Deb's I would, daughter i would definitely accept a, a new actor for Amber. so what is it what makes it a difference because i would totally well, agree well, n- number one, she wasn't in it very as much as as the other characters. Mm-hmm. Um, she left on a bit of a sour note. I thought they ruined her character towards the end. Absolutely. So it'd be a nice renaissance to have her come back and um, have her um, be a better character than she was when she left. Also, more roles for Asian actors. Mm. Like there, there aren't very many roles on TV for Asian actors, and if you bring back an established character for for that um type of actor i think that would be good i think we need more people like that on the show i wonder whether there's a, anything in like well the the Allahan family is now open to head swaps so if we said yes to ardu then we say yes to any Allahan. maybe offspring. maybe, maybe. I, I think amber amber left um I feel like that her story was just kind of like piled into the corner. Mm. I, I definitely could accept a, a new actress for her. But I would I would prefer if she came back though, because the actress herself was, was I enjoyed her, her performance and um, I thought she was fun and sassy, but I didn't like the way mm. that she... Yeah. Uh, talking of fun and sassy, Irma Ogden, a favourite of mine. that I've talk- A, a favourite of mine before I even knew that I liked her, but my, I still wanted to come back for the 60th anniversary to announce Hilda's death. What if it wasn't Sandra Goff doing it? No. <laughs> so that's really interesting. I would have to say no as well, only because we've recently been watching her in the 60s and 70s, but really she's not been in the show for, you know, 40 years now. So why not give it to someone else? But I suppose that I'd also be, I don't know, would that be a case oh, of it? But Amber was so, had such a, um, I, a thing is, this is the other thing about recasting. You don't want to hire somebody. He's going to be doing an impression of an actor in that role before them. Mm. But I wouldn't accept anybody as Irma who didn't have a sarcastic Liverpudlian accent. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of Sarky Scousers to go around. I'm sure there's loads. It's more than but enough. But I agree. I mean, it's Sandra Goff. Um, I don't think she's acted in anything for many, many years She wouldn't come now. back. Which so, so that's the other thing as well, isn't but it? But she might do. She might be tempted. I don't think she would do. But that's the other I thing to consider. To like, if, are you going to sacrifice the character because the actor doesn't want to come back as that person? Mm. I mean, I, I do want to have some kind of closure on Hilda and it seems perfectly normal to me and, and makes sense to me to have her come back. She's She was married to Ken's brother. But you keep have saying I, this. Like, I you, know. I don't understand why you've got this idea in your mind. I don't know either. It's just because a really good theory. They've had. already had... This is the thing. This year we have had... We've, we're going to have two big milestones. We've got the 10,000th episode, which we've already had, and the 60th anniversary in December. And in the 10,000th episode, we already had them announcing the death of a long-standing character, which was Dennis Tanner. And now you want them to do it again for the 60th anniversary. And I just say it's too soon. It doesn't make sense. Uh, they can't both revolve right, around right. somebody coming back and saying, oh, do you know the character used to be in it ages ago? Well, they're dead as well. <laughs> no, I know it's no, there's no plausible reason why they should be still alive, but 
I thought I'd tell you. Okay, me. fine. So we're saying no to Irma, even no. though she is. She uh, Sandra Goff means absolutely nothing yeah, to the vast majority of contemporary Coronation Street viewers. There's no uh, point having her come back as somebody else. Yeah, I mean they showed with Debbie Webster that had been another one. I don't think there'd have been any point in having Debbie come back last year if she'd have been played by someone else because yeah. the return was so short. If they'd brought a new actress into it, it'd be like, well, c- couldn't have Kevin just found out himself well, that his auntie Byers died? This, yeah, but also that char- that actress is a pretty well established, mm. yeah, um, that's true. professional. It's not like she went away and sat around waiting for nothing. <laughs> sat by the phone. <laughs> going, oh, I, I was going to work at Asda, but... I, I, <laughs> right, next cool name on the list, Gemma. Either Janice or Les Battersby. No! It has been a while since we've seen no! them. I can't believe... Right. Over 10 years, maybe, since like, Jan or Les Both have been of those are so iconic. I just don't know why you would replace them. Unless they've been up to something naughty I don't know about. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Um, it... I mean, I, I don't know how long they were in the show. I mean, it can't have been less. 10, 15 years, absolute maximum. Yeah, I know. So not a long, long, long time. Yeah, but there are people that have been in the show for 30 years who, um, you know, okay. and then they made a big splash and stuff. I can't imagine anybody. And the thing is about that too, if you were to bring them back as a couple or together... Would you recast one and not the other? Would that make any sense oh, at all? That, that that'd be work. bizarre, wouldn't that'd it? Be, that'd be awkward. You think of all the the um, the chemistry you built up over the years mm, mm. with with two characters like that. Okay. No, I wouldn't like that. Next name. Um, why have I written? You've written Aiden, I've written Aiden, which doesn't make sense. I don't thing. think Aiden's. <laughs> don't who's think so Aiden either. thinking about them? Aiden Critchley. Okay, I'll move on. Um, Michelle. Now, wouldn't this be a kick in the teeth to recast <laughs> Michelle? Oh, I can't see them doing it. I think they would be too scared of Kim Marsh. What would she do? She'd blow her top. What's wrong with me? She'd be blasting him on Instagram. <laughs> I just think that... No, you. I, I can't see it. It depends how much time had passed. I would say that if she were to come back in the next, you know, five years or so with somebody else, it'd be like, what, what's going on here? But if Michelle were to come back, you know, 20, 30 years for whatever reason, it, uh, and maybe Kim's moved on to other things, I I might be able to accept somebody else as Michelle and maybe even embrace her and prefer her to the original one. Who'd have thought? I hate to be negative, but I can't say that the show's lacking anything at all since she's left. <laughs> so why would you bring her back? Good point. It's not like the show's collapsing into a black hole of n- nothingness. Rob Donovan. Mark Bob. Bayliss was very good, but he was not in it for very many years. Bob Ronovan. <laughs> oh. He had a I real really charm and Mark charisma, Bayless. didn't he? He was really, really good. and Fantastic chemistry with Kate Ford yeah, as well. Yeah, and it, this is the thing we said, like, is, was he, was he um, Tracy's one true love? Like, yeah, maybe. Maybe he's the only man she's ever really loved. Um, Sorry, Steve. More than herself. Um, and it, it would be difficult to recapture that with somebody coming back. Oh, I don't know, because I really like Mark Barlis, but I really I like the character too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to change, but I think I probably could get over it pretty quickly yeah, if they did probably. go cast somebody else. I wouldn't want them to, but... Terry Duckworth. No, not Terry. The proverbial bad penny. He's been coming back in that show for years and years and years. It would make no sense to have him Yeah, come I mean, back. to be honest, there's not much reason for him to come back now. The only thing tying him onto the street, I suppose, is a a bit of a link to Tyrone yeah. and, and the house but th- this is actually I think the longest period of time since we've had a Terry return he was last in it in 2012 I think so it's been eight years since we've seen our terror and I, and I think it's always been about less, a less than yeah. eight, you know every three four five years so I don't think we will see him back again but to have him played by someone else after all this time be silly. despite the fact that again not many modern viewers may know who he is the younger viewer I, I don't think it would work for me. Uh, Andy McDonald. It's been, I think, over ah. 10 years since we've had Andy back. And he was another one who come back every now and then. He'd, like, come for weddings. And he's yeah. also the person now in Spain that Liz or Steve will go to if the actors want a bit of a leg. break or he whatever. Hurts, yeah. So um, I I think it's it's almost been long enough now for me to say... Yes, if they had to, if they had a really good reason for for Andy. Well, the other question is, 
are we only seeing Andy every few years because the actor's like, no, I'm not going to commit to being in it for very long. Is is the actor a, a hurdle to us seeing more of the character? Because if they are, then I would say, well, it would be good if we could get Andy in it more because it, it is interesting that, that Steve's got this twin brother that we never really hear about anymore. Yeah. And the, the sibling rivalry, especially with Steve as, as sort of a comedic character, could be really good fun. I think so. So I would actually really, really quite like to have to have Andy come back. Now, how would you, how would you, what would be the best role for Andy to play? Would it, would it be like the suave, sophisticated, like I've been, I'm multicultural. I've been living in Spain for, mm. for so long and I, I've was put up a successful business and I've come here to sort of enjoy my, well, hasn't he my been, he's been running a bar, hasn't he? He was also an English teacher over yeah. in Spain for or a bit. Or would be you quite want him to come back as like a buffoon idiot who's even worse than Steve? Oh no. No, he 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 was always the brighter of the twins, and they'd have to keep that. It'd be quite um, interesting to have him come back and like run the the Beast or the Rovers or something. Yeah, it would be the taking thing over is... from Steve's leftovers and running it better job than he did. Yeah, Steve does need that kind of character. That's why he was with Michelle, and that's why he's with Tracy because he needs. He's that's why his works really well with Liz, act, isn't it? Like, yeah, he's the he's the buffoon. To, and he needs to be reined in by other characters to kind of make him a bit more grounded. So at the moment, we don't really need an Andy on the show. But should he break up with Tracy, mm. I reckon that an Andy character... He's also got um, be really Tim good. to bounce off as well, hasn't he? So as long as Tim's, Tim's in the show. Not... Tim's also a bit of an idiot, though, isn't he? That's what, do you see what my point yeah, is? Yeah, okay. Uh... That, that he his more ridiculousness is his ridiculous behavior is enabled by the groundedness of his female partners generally mm -hmm. okay i've got a few more uh vicky steve's ex-wife you probably wouldn't make no any difference to you would she? <laughs> oh, i think i could bring uh, her back it, she, she's not been in the show for like 20 years or so now so i think they probably could uh, manage that raquel now that one would not fly with most people would i it? don't think that would fly with anybody the thing is about no reason for raquel to come back but no but we know that that she is one of the most iconic characters of yeah. The run of Coronation Street, you couldn't get anybody else to play Raquel. Absolutely not. Similar to Rosie, I'm sure other people could play Edits. Yeah. But they wouldn't be Sarah Lancashire. No, you couldn't have somebody replacing Sarah no. Lancashire. And I also don't think Sarah Lancashire's looking for work at the moment. I think she's doing all right. <laughs> I think she's okay. Not not wondering where her next check's oh, coming it, from. Can you imagine if she came back for the 60th? That would be oh. fantastic, wouldn't it? Um, Sharif. Wow. Another case like another case like Todd, where I don't think they'd be able to bring the actor back particularly. They don't, it wouldn't really work out. I don't think this is a bit too much water. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I think there is definitely potential in bringing the character no, back. No, I don't think but so. It, What's the point? Well, I think after this whole Jeff thing is out of the way, I mean, I, I, I think that to be honest, that um, Sheriff's been getting a bit of a bad rap up during the whole of this because during the time he was with Yasmin. Yes, he was the one that wore the trousers, but he wasn't, you know, as bad as Yasmin's making out him out to he be. He was great. stern. He wasn't, but he wasn't. She's making him out to be a monster who, who had her completely under the, under the thumb and under his control. And he, he really didn't. And it was only at the very end that they decided to do a bit of a character assassination on him and say that he'd been having an affair with Sonia for seven years. I disagree. But do you... I can't see the point. Like, number one, why... Why would you bring him back? He has no role in the story. It would make no sense. What would he do? He couldn't get back with Yasmin. Could he be brought back to die and then leave Yasmin a load of money? Well, you don't need to be a present to die and leave somebody money, do you? No, but they sometimes like to do that, don't they? Have a bring a character back to die like they did with Ray Langton and so on. Uh, I don't know. I don't okay. Like um, Zidane? I'd rather he came back as, as um, Kazim. Kazim Akhtar. I would as well. I'd probably accept a recast if if a few years have passed, but he's... Uh, yeah, but I, f I would feel like he got shortchanged then because yeah. he really didn't... Like, the actor didn't do anything wrong. I think he performed really well, and um, mm. I know he wanted to do other things, but... Yeah. I think I'm at the end of this long... I didn't realise this was so long. Oh, this is the last one. Spider Nugent. Back for Toya. What if he wasn't played... See, I don't remember much. I, I, 
can't really remember much about. I remember watching some of the stuff with him in, but in my mind, I think he left quite soon after you started watching. He looks a bit like Chris Martin, so maybe Chris Martin of Coldplay could come and <laughs> and be Spider. Maybe I think I would accept a recast of Spider. I don't think that. Um, I so can't a, remember what the guy looked like, so it wouldn't make any difference. So, uh, see, so if only I knew what Chris Martin looked like. It's a bit like Spider Newton. <laughs> So a lot of it seems to be down to how iconic the character is and how much we love the character to how accepting we are of a head swap, isn't it? That, yeah. I mean, with kids, it's always understandable uh, and sometimes it's preferable when they change and sometimes you wish they kind of had changed the actor. But um, I'm just... I, I wanna, I'm kind of thinking of some other, other head swaps that have been in the past that haven't been... I tell you what, that if you if you were to say who epitomizes Corey head swap, um, sorry, Gemma's just distracted me by showing me pictures of Spider Newton and Chris Martin on the iPad. And a conclusion, I don't think I think one of them would be flattered by the comparison. If you were to ask me who epitomizes Coronation Street head swaps for me, it would be Nick Tilsley. Yes, good point. He re- he was probably my first experience of it because um, when was it that Adam Rickett took over? 96, 97? 97, and then he left in 99 to focus on his music career, which was a great move. When you touch me, I breathe again. Um, he, he left the show properly in 2004 and they asked him to come back in 2009, but no, because he was in Shortland Street. He was. Which won all those BAFTAs. I will say... Back at the time, if you'd have asked me, like, would you, would you like Adam Rickett to come back? Even though, you know, he wasn't the best actor and he was clearly a case of high room for the sex appeal, he still won that because he was an adult and because he was quite, he was a prominent character, a member of the Platt family, I'd say, yeah, bring, bring Adam Rickett back. But now looking back on it, thank goodness that they cast Ben Price as... As weird as it is, again, for them to have cast someone who's, what, seven, eight, nine years older than well, the character the he plays, it was a Ben Price has given a whole new breath of life to the character. Departure on what had been established as as who Nick was previously to that, because he was... Um, Adam Ricketts quite a sort of waifish kind of diminutive person, isn't he? With like, And he was very much just a heartthrob. With his, even his hair was just very, very 90s. Oh, curtains. Like, yeah. For... And, and Ben Price is physically very different. He's, he's rugged. He's imposing, he's he's bigger, he is... Um, give you the squint of death. Yeah, he's got a very, I don't know, stern countenance. Mm. And he, you can't imagine him, like, getting his hair cut into curtains and oiling <laughs> up his abs for Heat magazine. No, whereas... Um, Warren Jackson, who played um, Nick before Adam Rickett, was was similar, but to who to 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 Adam, um, in that he was kind of more you know fresh face and blonde and everything. But we to, to to the producers themselves wanted to recast because they told him he didn't have the sex appeal, which which sucks. He was another one who was on this Kids of Coronation Street documentary I watched, and apparently um, he quit. Um, Coronation Street for a bit or he took a break from it so he could focus on his GCSEs and he only found out that he wasn't going back when a reporter came to his house and said what do you think about the fact that Adam Rickett has been recast because you're not sexy enough literally that's what he was told why don't you come in for some tea what a kick in the teeth that is so but um, the other Adam, thing, what? And I was just going to say, the other interesting factlet that I've got about Warren Jackson is that he was cast in Coronation Street before he was even born because his <laughs> parents were friends He's of Chris. He's fast-track showbiz type. He totally is. Um, but where is he now? Oh, I don't know. Um, he, his parents were friends of Chris Quinton, who played Brian Tilsley, and they did a little oh, deal or something oh to God. say... Oh, Buying you know. babies again. <laughs> um, was Adam Rickett famous before he became Nick Tilsley? I don't no, know. No, I don't think so. Okay. I think that he is a very debut. Adam Rickett is a very ambitious person. I've, I I don't normally say horrible things about people on the podcast, but I met him once and he was a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in the acting biz, though, isn't he? Well, he, he, he ain't did coming his... on the show, is he? <laughs> Not now. Well, we, do you remember when we went to... Um... I've said it before on the podcast. You have, you have. Well, it's probably one because we, we saw him in real life, didn't we, when we went to the British Soap Awards three years ago. Then. 
We, yeah. He was there getting his signing his autographs and everything. But honestly, he he was my first experience of Corey head swaps, and it was it was weird to me then. But he's he's the one that that really epitomizes it for me. Even though yeah. there have been other Coronation Street characters that have obviously had far more head swaps than him, I think the one the 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 character who's got the record for the highest number of head swaps is is Amy. Although I, it's difficult. The Barlows to... have been cursed with this, haven't they? Yeah, apart apart from Ken. Peter was played by... He's been played by seven actors over the years. And then you've got Tracy who's four, and you've got, um, yeah, you've got I, Amy who's... Amy's seven or eight, because there's a couple of twins in there And as Susan well. Barlow, who's hardly in it at all, has even had four people. Yeah, well, there, there's some interesting stories behind all of this. So let, let me tell you. OK, I'll be quiet. So, Peter Barlow, then. Um, he was uh, originally played for five years by Robert... He he knew is that how you pronounce that I don't know for five years and then the family moved away from Manchester so fair dues I I assume that unlike um, uh, Christabel Finch's family they actually let the producers know about this <laughs> um, and then he was um, followed up by Christopher Dorman nineteen seventy to seventy one so he must have been who we've just been watching recently on the DVDs that his family emigrated to uh, Canada. A lot of so these people moving again. away from Manchester. It's very rude. I know. Manchester's great. It's the place to be. You move there. Um, then Mark Duncan played Peter for one episode in 1971. And, um, I mean, 1971 was when uh, Valerie Barlow died. So I'm kind of guessing maybe that was the the, oh, the okay. last episode before they went up to Scotland or maybe they came back for a year. I don't know. Um, Linus Roach played Peter in his sporadic appearances between 73 and 75. Eight um, episodes. And so this was William Roach's son, who then later, came back to the Coronation Street in 2010 playing Ken's other son Lawrence so William Roach's own son has played two of Ken Barlow's sons which I is know, it's weird, weird. Although it's also it's weird character, well. the family resemblance um, strong it, yeah and the weird thing about Lawrence is that like, Hitler who what Lawrence who I know I know totally you think Ken does not give two and where's what, Lawrence in, in the queue for getting inheritance well I think I think that there was a bit of a um, didn't they have bad, an argument they, they had a bit of uh, bad blood there yeah wasn't somebody gay yes um, Ken's grandson was gay and, and I, then I think Lawrence that La- didn't like it I think that Lawrence yeah was a, was a, was a nasty piece of work and didn't accept um Joseph McKenna, who played Peter from 1977 to 1978, was brought in older um, than the actual Peter. So this is a, another... It wasn't just like you've had, say, with Ardy now, where Adam is older than um, uh, Ardy is. We and, also and, didn't and so mention, on. for Nick Tilsley, um, Ben Price is eight years older. Oh, no, I, I mentioned that. Eight years older than... Uh, yeah than the actual character but it looks good with it well with with <laughs> <laughs> with joseph um he was brought in so that the character could be older and so they changed peter's birthday because they wanted to have a story so that he could go and join the navy which is weird and then when he came back played by david's lonsdale in 1986 he'd been returned to the normal age so peter barlow's age has shifted all over yeah. the shop very very and weird he, he, he's had a scottish accent once yes joseph mckenna was the only person to play peter with a scottish accent i think um is a bit odd how he spent all that time a good um i don't know how many years he spent in scotland but he, a lot of his childhood he grew up there so it's a bit odd that you would Some never tell by listening to him better than others well chris gascoigne has played peter now since 2000 and um he's like in my head who peter is it's weird how know, you can I have so imagine. many actors playing a character but then you have one come and it's like yeah that'll do screw all them yeah chris gascoigne is is the peter I'll for stick me with this guy fantastic episode he, he made an appearance in the live episode for the 40th anniversary and, save um, the cobbles exactly well done you remembered that so that that was the <laughs> that was interesting that was interesting story of peter barlow then we got susan barlow like you said peter's twin sister um she's got a um a bit of an interesting history as well. Katie, he knew. So, the, so she this was, was she was so she was the twins. twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Peter and Susan twins were cast by actual twins. Uh, played by played actual by twins. <laughs> actual twins in real life. So they moved away from Manchester. And I can like just I say also, quite often I don't believe for one minute that it's because they're similar. They look similar to each other, or that ever comes into anyone's brain as to why they cast twins. It's I convenient. think it's literally because you only have to have one parent on the set. And they probably get a bit fed up with all the... All the stage mums. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wendy Jane Walker, to me, is the um, the one true Susan Barlow. She took over the role in 1970, so just when she was five. And she played her on and off till 1974. But then, interestingly, she 
after Susie Patterson came in and played her for a few years in the late 70s to 80s, Wendy Jane Walker returned from 1985 to 1987. So she had a bit of a break playing the character and then came back again. So I think that's quite a cool, you know, return from whence you came sort of angle to it. And and that was all the, that was the period where um, Susan got married to Mike Baldwin. Right. Which was probably her biggest story to date, if you don't count when she got hit by a car. Thanks, Billy. Which I think a lot of people don't. And that was a weird casting in 2001 because Joanna Foster, who played her then, looked absolutely nothing like Wendy Jane Walker, who was this kind of beautiful, blonde, big-haired woman. Calm down here a bit. (laughs) What are we saying about Joanna Foster? No, I'm saying that she had tight brown curls. Okay. We've we've seen the pictures of... I don't know. The picture of Susan that's been on Ken's, um, Ken and Deirdre's uh, dresser for years and years is is the Joanna Foster version of her. And I think she's also sitting with the um, with the Ian de Casteca version of Adam Barlow as well, so that's a bit odd. Um, but yeah, to, to me, when I think of Susan Barlow, I think Wendy Jane Walker, because that's, you know, for, for, for the big story. Um, no point asking me, because I've just realised I've got my T-shirt on backwards. So I don't, genuinely thank goodness you know can't even dress Coronation myself, Street. let alone no facts. Um Amy, she's just been played by a million kid actors. In the first two years of Coronation Street, there were five actors who played Amy. So they just, just couldn't get it right or something. And I haven't got I any other think facts it, I just about think her it in doesn't my really, Most people don't care. It doesn't matter. It and I'm, matter. I was thinking about, the, um, I was thinking about the, the quads and I was thinking to myself, I bet you they don't even bother to make sure when they have all the babies... I bet they don't even bother to make sure it's the same baby playing the same act, uh, character. <laughs> I bet they do. I bet the baby that plays Alad's played Cleo and all the rest of them. You know? I bet they don't care. <laughs> Do them a swap for a joke. So Amy's, um, obviously Elle Mulvaney is the, is the hopefully current the final, Amy. current and hopefully final version of Amy. I would be really disappointed now if, if they well, changed her. But it's completely it's up to Elle, her. obviously. But she's now reaching an age where she's going to have to make that decision, I suppose, but she's taken Amy to another level. The previous actress to play Amy was Amber Chadwick, who was another returnee. She played her in 2004, and then um, Madison Hampson took over, and then Amber Chadwick came back. Um, and when, just before Elle took over the role, um, there were reports in the press that Corey Bosses wanted an older and more capable actress. So this is like what we were talking about another earlier, kid, that sometimes kid. they they want to take the character in a certain direction. They want to give them more prominence. They've got a good idea for a story coming up or or they know that the family's going to feature more and, and and they want a decent actress to to play her and fair play to well, Coronation Street. The quality be, of the acting is is key. It could also just be like timings and you know like we can't bring her in every day or well mm. you know she can't she's got violin lessons on thursdays or well apparently you know I mean? apparently Go according on. to press reports amber chadwick's parents were um, emma chadwick amber chadwick's yeah. parents were really trying to fight to keep her in the show that they'd been apparently trying to stop her getting a chop for quite a while and in the end coronation street were like Yikes. nope contracts oh, up nice is it uh yeah but then um there was also before this Madison Hampson played in 2005 to 2006 and um, Coronation Street had to come out and deny press reports about her that her parents had uh, withdrawn her from the show because Coronation Street was, I quote, too harrowing. Coronation Blimey. Street said, it's common for child actors to be replaced. Jeez. Um, yeah, so a lot of the Barlows have got a quite interesting drama story. Between those two it really, really is. Um so I, don't, I think we've kind of covered most of the recasts now. Um, I mean, haven't we talked about Jack Webster? I mean, if you've been listening to the podcast for long enough, you'll know what I think about um, Kyron Bowes. He's a fantastic actor, but by gum, he's far too... Um, oh, sort of, sorry, sort of My paper. flapping paper. Gemma, we're supposed to make people think that I remembered all these facts. And I think it's <laughs> impressive that we've got a chart here, to be honest. That if, if you are if you are subscribed at the right level of Patreon, you are going to be receiving through the email this weekend my amazing chart that I've put together here. Um, yeah, <laughs> Kyron Bowes, I think he's fab, but he's far, far, far too old to be playing Jack Webster. He's 
he's teenager now three and, and a half years less. older and it does make a difference when you're that young it, it really really does whereas uh, now I, I obviously look like i still am in my 20s oh yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> who else have we had uh tommy duckworth had some recast but i suppose that's a character i think that... tommy duckworth is now superfluous isn't he um but if they if, if anyone's going to get recast to come to bring back it's going to be him because they ain't having chris fountain back they are not having chris fountain back it, um Although he was barely in it, um, interesting fact about Tommy Duckworth is the middle actor to play him, Joseph Aston, was a brother of Sam Aston. Wow. That that Never family, really tell you that. what, the, the Aston family produce many child stars. There's like eight or nine of them, I think, kids. Um, and the t he's got a sister that played, uh, I can't remember what the character was called, in the late 90s, early 2000s. So we, we've, had, we've had quite a few Astons and Corio over the years. Maybe we should have some kids. Mm. Get them out. Earning money. Um, who else? We've got. I've got a few ears. It's not that interesting. Mark Mark Redman, Mike Baldwin's um, other son. He'd been played by five actors. One of them was aged up two years so that he could go to so he could go to school with uh, with Nick in the early nineties. Um, Gordon Clegg um, was originally because we we've been watching him a little bit on the uh, DVDs, haven't we? Remember he went. Oh, he, yeah. They were going to run off to Gretna Green. Him and Lucille He's to get Clegg's married. Son. He was originally played by Bill Kenwright. And he made lots of on and off appearances in Coronation Street from the late 60s to the 90s. Um, but then when they wanted to bring him back in um, early 2000s, they couldn't get hold of him. This is because Bill Kenwright has now become this highly successful theatrical producer. He's one responsible for, for putting on Blood Brothers, Joseph and the Te Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. He is a Oh, he's the guy that's rich. Name. <laughs> yeah, a, because he's I a watched, big name yeah, in but I watched the documentary and he was on the documentary yeah. and they were like basically saying basically like one of the few actors to have uh, found real financial success outside of Coronation Street. Bill is Kenrod. This, yeah, it's like Well he's also chairman of Everton Football yeah. Club as well. <laughs> so he was he was busy in two thousand and two, two thousand and four when uh, when he came back for a few appearances. But um the I think quite did. Yeah, when the character did. But I think quite rightly so in 2012 when he was last in it and probably his final appearance, to be honest, that it was Bill that played him because this was after, um, this was for Betty's funeral. So oh, when Bet yeah. after, after Betty She's Driver Betty, uh, Betty died, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Betty's his mum in the show <laughs> after it, it only felt right to bring back the original actor but to we did, pay his respects yeah but, because... but, but when we watched it it didn't really mean anything to us to be fair did it harsh <laughs> um, so that, so that was nice to see him again um i suppose just thinking recently on coronation street we've had a couple of other recasts like ronan um roman truman who um, met his fate at the hands of dr Ali was um, recast, wasn't he? Because he, that, do you remember that was confusing? Because he was in it in 2012. Yes, it was weird. Um, not 2012, 2017. 17, yeah. And he was he was caught up with in some kind of altercation with Adam Barlow, and then he came back like a year and a half later, played by a guy called Alan McKenna, which is weird because there's a Coronation Street character called Alan McKenna as well, and Can't he he name. looked nothing like him and. And we were supposed uh, to realise We were supposed to know person. that it was him and because they could say, oh, Ronan, it's you. Either, yeah, like, but... Mm -hmm. You weren't that big a character. I know it was a year and a half ago, but I barely remember you, so that was weird. And then we've also had um, Callum's mum recast recently, haven't we? Marion Logan used to be played by Susan Cookson. Again, really minor role in 2015-16, but we quite liked her, didn't yeah. we? So it was a bit weird for me. She was in me. Emmerdale. Yeah, she was, she was in Emmerdale when they wanted to bring the character back last year, so they recast her was um carrie pierce which was weird to me as well because i recognize the actress from the bill um so <laughs> when, whenever i see her and not that she's in it very much anyway but i assume we may see her again as long as max is in it um i'm thinking oh you're that one from the bill i suppose that that's <laughs> that's always an advantage when you're so sheltered from the wider world of tv from me yeah and you have got a, don't have a not, not a good memory for faces on the whole i don't notice when these things happen sometimes um it was also one more funny story it was vicky arden um he was played by helen warburton oh, yes. in the 90s for just four episodes and then the person who replaced her which ironically is called chloe newsom um she <laughs> was in it for like seven years between 91 and 98 but she said that when it's one of her memories 
of it was Barb, um, Julie Goodyear and Roy Barraclough walked up to her and said, oh, you're an imposter. Yeah. Like, I think they were joking and ribbing her, but... Um, I think that must that scarred her for I a little bit. I think it did. If you've got two... If you've got big names like Roy Barraclough and Julie Goodyear saying, you know, you're not Vicky. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'll do the best I can. Well, she showed them, because, especially Roy Barraclough. Well, actually, she, out, she outlived both of them on the show, to be fair. Um, Would you ever replace Bet? Oh, no. <laughs> Didn't, e- to... didn't even mention her name I on know, that thing, say, you? There's only one Batgirl, or isn't there? Well, Lynch, whatever you want to call her. I just thought uh, another recast we had recently on Coronation Street with Wayne, Wayne yeah. Hayes. Um, and he, I loved him. Obviously, hashtag bring back Wayne and everything. Um, he was another one that at the time I thought, oh, fine, they're recasting him. Um, he looks kind of like him. Maybe not quite so ginger as he was back then. Um, but I, it wasn't until I was doing a bit of research for this um, earlier this week that I realised that the actor who played Wayne in his original stint, Gary Damer, um, is still you know in the in the acting biz. He I mean, he was last credited in something in two thousand and fourteen, but he's they uh, they, he, they did actually ask him. They approached him last year to take up the role of Wayne again, but um, uh, apparently they couldn't make it happen, according to a qu- a, uh, a tweet from uh, Gary that I found. But that would have been quite nice to have had the. Th- so sometimes it's just like makes you feel all kind of warm and like nostalgic when they bring back an old actor, doesn't it? Well, he's a fellow podcaster, isn't he? He is. He is. He's got a a, a podcast about marathons that he does he's now. Old uh, Gary Damer called Behind the Medal. So if you are for whatever reason missing your original Wayne fix, then you can uh, hear his voice at least. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you could go over and uh, we assume that if you're listening to this, you enjoy podcasts. I don't know. <laughs> um, if not, you are really not living your best life, are you? Final, final facts. Cause I think it's been quite. A, I, I quite really enjoyed, enjoyed this, this discussion. Yeah. I hope everyone else has. I was wondering, like, does does yeah, yeah, enjoy yeah. it? Anyway, some characters that you might not know were originally played by someone else. Yeah. You obviously do. I know this. You know this because you're a Coronation Street and podcaster and genius the, the and it's notes. written in front of you. Yeah. Emily Nugent was not always played by Eileen Derbyshire. You no, know she that. Was, yeah, I remember that. They, they literally just called her Miss Nugent, didn't they, or something? Or was it Emily? Yeah, they're Miss, she New- was Miss just, Nugent. just... Uh, a sort of a faceless droney person. I think I, really it might have only been for one episode yeah, or just, so, well, wasn't the, it? We it only was saw a... one episode where it happened. Yeah, and it was in a 1960 episode, yeah. um, Miss Nugent. Um, Scurrying about to yeah, help Ina Sharp. Basically, and then when they brought her back in properly in 1960, yeah. when that's when Eileen Derbyshire took over. Um, Kirk has not always been Andy Wyman. Uh, I can't remember how long Kirk's been in the show now. I'm going to say it must be a good 20 years or so. But his first um, appearance, the character's first appearance, was um, by an uncredited walk-on actor. He was just like walking down the path with uh, Maria. And I think Tyrone sees her with him and then thinks that she's got another fella because this was when Tyrone and Maria were going out. And um, she said, oh, no, that's just my brother. And he's called Mark as well. So not only has Kirk had a different... uh, Either... Maria and Kirk have got a different brother that just doesn't really get talked about. Maybe. Maybe be. he's maybe he's not even um maybe he's the the even less intelligent than Kirk and he and just less interesting. He lives in the attic. Yeah. Or on, on the on the uh the Sutherland Donkey Farm, or, I don't know. Or they just renamed him. Yeah, renamed and him. And whoever's in charge him. of naming characters like I don't know guys, I just really feel good about Urk as the ending of a name. So it's a Mark or Kirk but it's gotta Dirk? be one of them. Well, I don't mind, but Urk <laughs> at the end of a name. I have to have it. I um, love it. Fan and us favourite, Becky Granger slash McDonald, made famous by Catherine Kelly, and I could never imagine anyone else in this role, was not always played by Catherine Kelly. Her very first appearance on the programme um, was played by an actress called Amanda Tyrell, um, where she was some kind of street urchin or something that Hayley encounters, I think. I can't remember. Um, she was only in one episode. She was in one episode, and it was about six months before Catherine Kelly took on the role. But I'd completely forgotten about that before oh, I was doing a little bit of research. But yeah, just, just imagine that, not having Catherine Kelly playing Becky again. How different the character would have been, how possibly much less beloved, much less, you know, given a bigger role that it'd be if without the, the injection of character that, but, that um, Catherine brought to the role. And uh, finally, um, I think maybe this was a, maybe a bit better known, but Blanche, uh, dear Blanche, was once played by um, an actress called Patricia Cutts. 
think for just two episodes in the 70s, we might actually see her at some point yeah, on, she on died the DVDs. Yeah, by suicide after two episodes and then was replaced by Maggie Jones. Yeah, who, um, who is who, who, iconic. Very iconic, yes. Made the role her own and uh, continued the role for a good you know, 40 years, 35, 40 years or so, on and off. On and off. You've got a list here of of um of child actors who haven't been recast yet. Do you think this might be um jinxing them? Um, I think it's quite interesting to point out. So these are these definitely people who have never been played by anybody else apart from babies, or if they've just always been apart from babies. Yeah. So like, go on. Max Turner. Yeah, Max has always been played by um, Harry What's His Face, who plays him at the moment. He, he was so cute when he was little. Do you remember when Max came into it? Oh my gosh, he was the most adorable little blonde boy. Oh, we met him, didn't we? We did, we did, but um, that we met him. Um, how long ago was that? Shy, Three, four years ago? ago. He was, but when he first came into it, he was a real cutie pie. But he's never been recast. I. Uh, you know, I, I think it could still happen. We were quite convinced last year, weren't we, when he went off to live with Marion for a bit. We said, oh, I think that might be the last that we've seen of him. Well, these are these are all the people we're talking about now, apart from Chesney, <laughs> are kind of of an, of an age where it's a bit more in flux, isn't it? Simon mm. Barlow, another one, he came in as a small child. He was never a baby on the show. Was um, he? No, he was never a baby. I mean, he was, he, he, he was, he was in it as a baby, played by a random baby. But when well, then he what came... do you mean by he was never a baby? No, I didn't mean the baby. actor was never a baby. No, no, he was a baby. Out of an egg. I think he was. But when he came back and he was four or five years old, maybe. So he's been that again, character. Real, really cute. And, and this is the thing, I you can know, bring in these cute horrible. actors, but they're either <laughs> like, like your puppies or your baby tigers or whatever it is that you, you adopt. They don't, they don't stay cute for long. <laughs> um, they don't stay cute forever, should are I say. Are you saying that these people are not cute? Oh, we have Simon no, Barlow. We have no. Um, Alex Bain. this. I, I, I don't. I, I don't think I don't he'd think mind he... if you said he wasn't cute anymore. He's he too is cool. A, he's a father now. <laughs> I don't think he needs to be concerned about. See, I don't retaining I, that air I, of cuteness. I think he might have. He might have escaped the um, the recasting man's acts. Maybe. I, I don't. I don't think that they would recast him unless he chose to leave. Yes, and even exactly. then, they might retire the actor and have him go and you know live off in Portsmouth or, or whatever. Um, Asher has obviously um, escaped. She was played by a baby as a baby, but since she came back, um, uh, unlike it's nice that they've got these babies that can play other babies, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite um, a challenging role when you're as back. As I said young. earlier, I think we um, we're probably going to stick with Tanisha now in the role. Hopefully, now she's got a few decent stories. Chesney's under her never belt. changed. He was very young when he came in the show. Yeah, big child weathered star. The, he's weathered he's... the storms. Mm. And uh, Ruby, she's played. Um, I can't remember what the actress is called. No, that's really bad. She's played Ruby since she was one, um, and and we oh, we, yeah. we haven't we haven't actually mentioned Hope because Hope got a um, oh, yeah. new actress in Isabella Flanagan just two three years ago, didn't we? Because she had a big story coming up, and I can't remember the last actress who played Hope. Um, I've got it here. Oh, there was it was twins, Faith and Nicole Holt. I can't remember whether a, a reason was ever given for them leaving, but also very very cute to those girls. Um, Macy Allaby. Macy Allaby. She's played Ruby since 2012. Yes, so maybe two years old, I don't know. Anyway. Um, that's quite a long time, really. It is. And um, that's, she is adorable. that's going to be another one that's painful uh, if she, really if she painful gets. if she, because she's got a bit of a cult following, has yeah. Macy, hasn't see, she? I, think... I could totally see them wanting to recast her when she gets to, you know, a teenager. Cute outspoken children on Corrie can can be a bit of a danger zone can't they because Amy went through that phase where she was very outspoken and it was only funny because of how old she was mm. and then they managed really well to to adapt the character according to her age and not make her like there's a very real danger of making a character insufferable when they get to a certain age if they're still you know speaking out of turn when when they're 15 is not as funny as when they're five. Well, I think that was one of the things that made people love Sam Aston so much when he was little because he was a little a little old man, wasn't he? He was yeah. he was wiser than his years. I know, and it doesn't when he work first came now into because it. he's supposed to be wise, but yeah. he's just grumpy. <laughs> um, right, I think that's about it, Gemma. I've enjoyed that. 
So um, uh, we obviously we don't think we covered everything. Oh no, there's one thing we haven't said about, which is quite funny, which what? was the, sca- the scandal. Oh my gosh, how could we miss that scandal, the Bethany Platt scandal? Yeah, so we've got Bethany Platt. That was amazing. We that was like this. one of my favourite recasting stories that we totally missed. It. Go on. Mia Cookson was Bethany for just seven episodes in the year 2000, and then she was played by twins Amy and Emily Walton between 2000 and. Yeah, in both, 2000 uh, and 2007, yeah. yeah. They had, they, done, they they had, had some to, pictures online recently, didn't they? Then they, they hit 18. They had to leave because Tina O'Brien left. Mm. And they, um, like you said, became gymnastic, gym, gymnasts. <laughs> then they wanted to cast a new Bethany in 2015. And so they did the auditions and everything. They found Katie Redford, who um, looked fabulous, but within days... The, the press had found out... I think it was uh, via somebody on Digital Spy I, Forums. I thought... She, yeah, but it's because she put something on Instagram about her birthday. Yeah, I there was, was some kind of, of she, social media investigation. So we all know that we all know that Bethany was famously born in the year 2000 to a teenage mother. So her age... She can't time, be too close to Tina O'Brien's she's age. She's got to be a bit a bit younger than that. So K- Katie Redford said she was 19 and they found out that she was actually 25 and then she got swiftly recast. Um, and big, and uh, the, the character is played by Lucy Fallon mm. until this year. It just turned out quite well for her, to be fair. Um, not for Katie. Not, not for Katie. <laughs> I'm not sure what Katie's up to now. Um, I don't think she's going to be able to come back and, and re-audition for Coronation Street after her, that little deception. No. But you know what? It was very au fait. It was quite the dumb thing to lie about your age when you were an actress back in the day. So I don't know what's changed particularly. <coughs> Doris Speed. Apart from <laughs> you can't have a photo of yourself blowing out the candles on a cake that says 25 when you're... Supposed to be 19. Yeah, if, if only Doris had had uh, put that up on her that... Instagram back in the 80s, maybe it wouldn't have been such a scandal I when can't it finally believe hit. Also, that people can still lie about how old they are in this day and age. Like, I remember when I turned 30 last year, everyone knows now that I'm 31. You don't all leave a digital I footprint. I couldn't lie about it. I know, I know. Um, anyway, that, that was an amazing time to be a Coronation Street fan, just to, you know. Twitch your, I can your, never tell. the nice curtains of the internet and go, ooh, ooh scandal. Scandal. <laughs> I can never tell if you're not listening to me or if you just don't think my jokes are funny. I do think their jokes are funny. Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> I said I was 31. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of me, darling. I'm actually 29. Yeah, you're that as well. <laughs> you dummy. You're ageless. I don't know if that sounds good or bad. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a phase or something right um thank you everybody for listening to our extra bonus content i hope you enjoyed this if you get I anything i thought this was fun i, I thought, thought this, was... this was lots of interesting stories and i would really i would love to pick somebody's brain who's worked in in behind the scenes of some of these decisions and to know why Ooh, they know. picked some people and why they didn't but i think that would be a bit um i really really would i, I breaking don't a few confidences i don't like recasts on the whole but i accept that they are a necessary part of soap Especially yeah, for young some, actors. Some and notable there, examples there, of really good ones. Yeah, and there, and there are some very, very good reasons why they have to happen. And there uh, have also... I, uh, sorry, I was going to say, there have also been some some characters that have never been recast, like... Um, well, like with Debbie Webster. Yeah, Debbie or... When they, when they brought them back. Um, oh, it's Liz's husband. Jim. Jim. Yeah, she never recast him. Dennis, I mean, Dennis Tanner. He came was, back was, after the, uh, what, 40, 40 yeah, he had a the record, The world record for the longest period of time between being in it and, and, and coming it, back. Uh, he's Wendy the kind Crozier, of character as well that they Ray possibly could have recast. Um, and I don't know whether people would have complained because it would have been so long with Dennis. It, it is really a challenge of a long running show like Coronation Street that you are going to come up against these dilemmas of cast, recasting. And not everybody who was in the show is in a position to even want to come back, let alone can still... I would say, on the whole, if it's at all possible to get the original actor back, especially as soap, you know, Coronation Street has been on for 60 years now and nostalgia is a really important element of it. And if you go around changing the history and that might mean changing the way a character looks, there's going to be a lot of fans that that's not going to sit right with. So wherever possible, I'd say keep the same actor. But I definitely much prefer Ben Price to... um, Adam Rickett. Adam Rickett. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Um, So it, it, it can work for the best, obviously, but... I just, I just feel like, 
I like the, the nostalgic, homely, kind of comfortable feeling of seeing an old face and keeping them. I'm watching them grow up, really. Creepy. No, it's nice. It's like, you know, you get those characters, like the, the programme, sorry, like the 7-Up programme, where they, they watch these yeah. real normal people every seven years on TV. And it's like, yeah, you, you feel like you know them. And it's, it's the same with soap characters. Oh, we like, it's like we know them all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if anyone listening has got anything they want to add to the discussion, do write in and let us know or put comments if you're watching this on YouTube or whatever, you really. Can find Who... us on Twitter, at Conversation Show, on Facebook, Spotify, YouTube. You can't contact us and tell us what you think about it on Spotify, though. You... Uh, do, uh, can do you? you I don't know. If you... Maybe you can, I just haven't ever noticed. Rate and, rate and view us on iTunes, please. Yes, you can leave comments on our blog at Conversation Show. Yes, you can. And you can do it on as Podbean well. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for listening, everybody. And we will be back next week for episode 415. Or if you haven't watched the main bit of the, the listen to the main bit of the podcast yet, we haven't even recorded it yet. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the best and bit. And listen ever done. to that right now because it's out. It's out. See you next time, everybody. Ta ra for now. Mm-hmm.